What's the one fun fact that you most often tell people? Lion tamers use chairs, because lions are wired mentally, to focus on one thing and attack it. With the four prongs of a chair coming at it, it totally flips its shin backs off. So, theoretically, I could use an octopus to tame lions. But what would you use to tame the octopus? Broccoli, cauliflower, and a few other vegetables are man-made, and do not exist in the wild. They are derived from Brassica oleracea, wild cabbage. Also, modern corn is unable and capable of reproducing in the wild due to the husk. The fact that AOL still makes over 500 million dollars a year through dial-up internet subscriptions is one of my favorites. Sometimes I process letters and the person puts in their email point I still see at AOL.com. In like what the f every time. I've been wanting to start a business selling vintage ML addresses to hipsters who could pass up the irony of H0Tchik25 at AOL.com. Hippo milk is pink. A grouping of frogs is called an army. Battletoads. May I ask who's calling? Officer Battletoads click. Carrots were originally purple. Can confirm. The Dutch monarch carrot planted seeds together, until the carrots grew orange to match their royal color the house of orange. Orange carrots were a symbol of prestige. Funny considering purple is often considered a royal color now. There's a stand at my local farmer's market that sells purple carrots. Hummingbirds metabolisms are so fast, that they have to go into a hibernation-like state called torpor, just to sleep through the night, otherwise they would starve to death in their sleep. Also, if you ever see a hummingbird upside down on a branch don't worry, it's not dead, it's most likely in torpor. Another fun fact, buds, some rats, and bears also undergo torpor. Super bonus fun fact, bear hibernation is actually just an extended state of torpor. I can't handle this rapid pace of fun facts. It's too many. Oxford University predates the Aztec Empire. If you put a piece of pineapple somewhere in your mouth it will start eating you. It has proteins that degrade meat. This is why people who work in pineapple plantations have obscured or removed fingerprints. I'll keep that in mind next in case I decide to become a serial killer pineapple farmer. Biologist here. Also, don't marinate things for too long in pineapple juice. This only goes for fresh pineapple juice. Though, why? Pineapple contains an enzyme called bromelain from the family of plants pineapples come from. The bromeliads, which dissolves connective tissue. Ever eat too much fresh pineapple, and feel your tongue start to sting a little? That's because your tongue is literally being dissolved. Similarly, it's why you can't make a jello mold out of fresh pineapple. The bromelain in it will break up the gelatin structure, and prevent it from gelling properly. Thus, you must use canned pineapple. The canning process denatures the enzyme, and prevents it from functioning. If you marinate your meats in small amounts of pineapple juice for not too much time, though, you'll tenderize the meat quite nicely. So don't be afraid to do so. Is this why it cuts the F out of my mouth? Whenever I eat it, I always thought it was a mild allergic reaction I had, because my tongue goes bumpy and feels raw. When I eat pineapple, I guess it's not just me then. Try taking it out of the can. No, you've got to skin it first. My wife and I once tried to marinate chicken in fresh pineapple. Big mistake. After 3 hours in the fridge, the chicken breasts had all dissolved into a liquid. We were just married, and poor as hell. So we had nothing but white rice for dinner that night. You could have made chicken and pineapple soup. It doesn't really affect the nutritional value. I believe that's only fresh pineapple. Though I could be wrong. Something about the canning process kills the enzyme. It's why you can't use fresh pineapple in jello, but you can use canned. There are more lakes in Canada than the rest of the world combined. It's also the country that has the longest amount of coastline, but coastlines frackle, and thus impossible to objectively measure. Coconuts are isotonic and sterile, therefore, if you wanted to, you could inject it directly into your bloodstream instead of an fourth bag. I don't think I could fit a whole coconut into my bloodstream. Don't worry, it's a suppository. This is what American GIs did in the Pacific during WWII, but it isn't a suitable long-term substitute. Coconuts don't contain any sodium, which is essential for proper balance and brain function. So put some sodium in the coconut and shake it all up. 1 million seconds is a little over 11 days. 1 billion seconds is over 31 years. Everyone knows a billion is a 1000 million. 
but the size difference is still difficult to conceptualize. I found that cookie clicker really helped me conceptualize gigantic numbers. All it did to me was make me think, wow, that's a small number. I make more than that per second on cookie clicker. Whenever I see a large number, and a trillion seconds is about 31,700 years. That takes you all the way back through recorded history, and probably before the time that humans migrated into North America. Homo sapiens would be dominant, but Neanderthals would still be roaming around. Keep that in mind, when people start talking about million dollar items in our trillion dollar budget, they are talking about trimming a few weeks off a time period that's longer than we can comprehensibly write about. Penguins have an organ above their eye that turns salt water into fresh water, eats cereal sadly. From when it was discovered to when it was declassified as a planet, Pluto did not make a full orbit around the Sunday. Thanks for the gold too. I wanna know where the gold at. I think this is sad. It's like being told you're invited to a party, then being uninvited. After you're halfway there, Pluto had its own party, with dwarf planets and hookers. Tough year. Deal or that is a hardcore comment score. Also, it went from being the 8th planet to the 9th planet, before declassification, due to its highly eccentric orbit. Check out this picture, to see the orbit of Pluto versus Neptune. Earth's orbit has an eccentricity of 0.0167, whereas Pluto's orbit has a mean eccentricity of 0.248. An eccentricity of 0 is a perfect circle, the higher that number, the more of an oval slash egg shape the orbit. Blue whale larter is a large enough for humans to swim through, their hearts are also the size of cars, and their call as a species has gotten deeper over the last 50 years. I really like blue whales. Kellogg's Pop-Tarts replaced Post's Country Squares, which existed long before Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts only succeeded because Country Squares didn't sound so appealing to the younger generation, and Pop resonated with pop music and pop culture, etc. Country Squares sounds like an insult Marlon Brando might have used in the wild one. Teddy Roosevelt watched Lincoln's funeral procession, in fact, there's a photograph with the young boy standing in a balcony as the casket went by, on Roosevelt's inauguration, he had a lock of Lincoln's hair tucked away in his ring, also, because I'm bad at picking one, if John Smith was truly captured by Powhatan's tribe, many historians believe, that he was never in actual danger, the tribe would have faked him out as a part of the initiation, before they would negotiate with him, they would make him incredibly vulnerable, and then accept him in. My twin brother has a third testicle, I don't, it's how my parents used to tell us apart as infants. Family insider joke, his nickname is Tree, this is a serious question, does he seem to have more testosterone than you, more facial slash body hair, better at sports, more confident, yeah. He has a lot more facial hair, fur actually, than I do. I can grow a beard in a week. He can grow one overpass, only slightly exaggerating. I'm going bald. He can be a stunt double for the missing link. I don't think I've been in a fight since I was 21. He averages about 3 fights a year. John Tyler, the 10th president of the United States, still has living grandchildren. The last living person. To have been at Ford's theater the night Lincoln was assassinated there lived long enough to be interviewed on television. Awesome. Obama doesn't even have living grandchildren. Our closest galactic neighbor, Andromeda, will collide with our galaxy, the Milky Way, in about 4 billion years that is. The resulting collision will make for a beautiful night sky. Too bad humans and all other terrestrial life will be long gone by then seeing that our sun will dry up the surface of the earth by then. Here's a picture of what it would look like if somehow, we are still around. That bright point in the sky, is the center of the new galaxy. Milkdromeda or Milkameda is what scientists have nicknamed it. It will shine as bright, if not, brighter than the full moon. Ever wonder how you plant a banana tree, which isn't actually a tree? Where are the seeds? Wild bananas are actually like bean pods. Inside the peel, they contain large seeds in the flesh. The bananas we eat, known as the Cavendish banana, is a sterile mutant that does not produce seeds and instead produces a sweet of fruit. So how do we get new banana plants? By using shoots to create clones. Thus all bananas you eat are clones of a horrible mutant abomination. The problem here is that because they are genetically identical and are cloned, 
they are unable to adapt, a bad disease that thrives on Cavendish bananas could potentially wipe out the entire species. The same applies for navel oranges, horrible mutant clones. Oh, and that lump in a navel orange is its undeveloped fetal twin. Delicious. Also the banana taste in most candies aren't that of the modern banana, but the one from the 1940s that is now extinct. My name is Ozymandias, king of fruit, taste my yellow flesh, ye peckish, and enjoy. Only candy remains. This already happened once. Bananas used to be the Gros Michel variety that were wiped out by Panama disease. It was said to be bigger and tastier. Bagpipes, haggis, kilts, whiskey and tartan all originate from outside of Scotland. Some sea slugs have penises long and hard enough to use as swords. Because they are hermaphrodites, they engage in penis fencing until one is either dead or pregnant. Mercury's day is twice as long as its year. Even though it is impossible to sink in the Dead Sea, if you fall in face first, the density of the water makes it so hard to turn over and get your face out that the Israeli government has named it the second most deadly place to swim in Israel. That's terrifying. Well I've been there and never knew that we would swim up super fast and pencil down and our head never went underwater. Askin was smooth as f after that day. Word of great warning. Use those showers to wash the salt off afterwards. I didn't when I got back on my bus, and I still have scars on my leg from the layers of skin the salt burned away. I like your definition of fun fact. I have been there, and it is quite terrible place to swim. If you have or even the slightest cut that you don't know about you will. Also, don't fart. That chef I'm burns for hours. What's the first national Israeli lava pit? That when a blue whale's brain sends the signal to move its most posterior muscles, its tail, it can take up to 4 seconds, because they can be so damn big, edit, I'm sorry, I can't provide a source, a professor slash mentor of mine told this to me, when we were discussing, how large they can get, blues aren't my area of expertise, and I believe him, but it is what it is, and I can provide no source, also, it reminded me of drive, Sue's sleep book when the lion's tail is so long he can bite it at bedtime, and doesn't feel it, until it's time to get up in the morning. Similarly, if you're on a good server, you probably have more latency between your brain and your feet than you do between pulling the trigger, in Call of Duty and the server receiving the signal. If you flick your nipple, it'll go hard in pretty much dead on 7 seconds. Joke's on you. It's hard already. Is it weird that I tried? I almost tried. Then had a roho ho. I'm not falling for that one. Random internet stranger moment. I get my hair cut at McDonald's. It's true. I used to work a half mile from McDonald's Global HQ in Oak Brook, Illinois. They have a stylist in the basement of their office building called McClip. A group of cats is called a cloder. Whenever someone says getting you people to do anything is like herding cats you can chime in with a group of cats is called a cloder, and a group of kittens is called a kindle, not to be confused with kindling. Mostly unknown fact, there are several kindles in the Amazon. Some collective nouns for animals are awesome. A parliament of owls, a business of ferrets, an ostentation of peacocks, a pandemonium of parrots, an unkindness of ravens, a crash of rhinos, a gaggle of geese, a murder of crows, a flamboyance of flamingos. Shel Silverstein wrote a boy named Sue. That Jupiter's red spot is about 2 to 3 Earth size. Not many people seem as interested though. It's a huge effing hurricane that's 2 to 3 times the Earth's size. And it just keeps on storming. I once threw up an icy. And it was still cold coming out. I got really drunk once. And had to bath something fierce. I drank a bunch of ice water. To try to get myself to sober up. And make sure I wasn't gonna have a wicked hangover. Every time I bathed it was ice cold. It actually made bathing a lot less of a task. Usually it burns your throat and feels so hot and gross. This was actually a really enjoyable bath. Probably the most refreshing bath ever. Henry VII had a monkey that was quite proficient at making vulgar gestures at people. Henry VIII's first act as king was throwing a forementioned monkey out of the window. In the movie Catch Me, If You Can, the French policeman that arrests Frank Abagmail Jr. is the real Frank Abagmail Jr. In the pursuit of happiness the real Chris Gardner passes Will Smith and his kid in the final scene. 
the creator of Super Smash Bros., Masahiro Sakurai, is also the creator of Kirby, which is why he's so hard to beat in the original N64 version of the game. I once bought a car from a guy whose great uncle, of the same name, was shot dead by my great uncle, of the same name. You both have the same great uncle who killed himself with a gun. Solved it. No. No. That riddle thread was a few days ago. There were still woolly mammoths alive when the pyramids were being built. When Google's founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin were trying to come up with a name for their search engine, they found out about the number Google 10100 and decided to call it that. They asked their intern graduate student to go book the domain name but he misspelt it as Google, and they stuck with it. I heard it was Sergi who misspelled it. Why would a startup company in a garage have an intern? Seen Anderson was the one of the graduate graduate who shared room 360 of the Gates CS building with Larry Page and Sergi Brin and the one who misspelled misspelled Google. From time to time I read or hear stories of the origin of the search engine and company named Google that are incorrect, which prompts me to write this brief account. Based on my understanding of the genesis of the name, the source of my information is my friends and colleagues from Wing 3B of the Gates Computer Science Building at Stanford University, where Google was born. In 1996, Larry Page and Sergey Brin called their initial search engine Backrub, named for its analysis of the web's backlinks. Larry's office was in room 360 of the Gates CS Building, which he shared with several other graduate students, including C. Anderson. Tamara Munzner, and Lucas Pereira. In 1997, Larry and his officimates discussed a number of possible new names for the rapidly improving search technology. Scene recalls the final brainstorming session as occurring one day during September of that year. Scene and Larry were in their office, using the whiteboard, trying to think up a good name something that related to the indexing of an immense amount of data. Scene verbally suggested the word Googleplex. And Larry responded verbally with a shortened form. Google both words refer to specific large numbers. Scene was seated at his computer terminal, so he executed a search of the internet domain name registry database to see if the newly suggested name was still available for registration and use. Scene is not an infallible speller, and he made the mistake of searching for the name spelled as google.com, which he found to be available. Larry liked the name. And within hours he took the step of registering the name google.com for himself and Sergey. The domain name registration record dates from September 15th, 1997. So there is this star, Eta Karani. It is massive. About 150 times the mass of our Sunday. It is so massive it is too unstable to maintain fusion. So it explodes. It explodes on a regular basis, every couple hundred years or so. The problem is, that it is such a massive body, that the gravity pulls in nearly all the matter, that a refined star exploding pushed out, and ignites again. That's pretty effing mental, if you ask me. That's metal. A Boeing 747's wingspan is longer than the Wright brothers' first flight. If the history of the Earth were compressed into a year, modern humans would appear on December 31st at about 11 p.m. The first U.S. president to leave the boundaries of the continental United States while in office was Theodore Roosevelt when he went to Panama in 1906 to check the progress of canal construction. The universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. We know this because we can observe other galaxies moving away from us faster and faster. This means that in billions of years, all other galaxies will be beyond the horizon of our visible universe. At that time, beings living in this universe galaxy, and others presumably, will have no reason to believe that the universe is expanding at all and will presume, as humans did for a long time, that the universe is static, neither expanding nor contracting. They will have no way of actually observing this fundamental aspect of our reality. What a bummer. Speaking of the universe, there will be a point in time long after heat death, that the universe will be star less longer than it had stars. Even further along, the point will come, when the difference increases so drastically, that it could be said the universe never even had stars. This keeps me awake most nights. The 1337% of pi is 42. It's also the first four digits of the phone number of an Islington flat where I went to a fancy dress party and met a beautiful girl who I totally failed to get off with. Edit. Gold. Thank you kind slash you slash weirgu. Bananas are not that high in potassium. 
compared to other foods. Potatoes have more. I'm potassium deficient, and was told by the ear doctors all the potassium high foods. Honey, we shrunk ourselves lied to me. When the oldest person on earth was born, there was a completely different set of people on earth. Every single one of them like it, but I'd prefer this in a more depressing form. Everyone who lived when the oldest person on earth was born Haves already died. Correct my grammar. If it's too weird, you are a programmer. On a slightly similar note, for a very brief moment you were the youngest person on earth. The so-called birthday problem. Despite the fact that there are 365 days in year, the likelihood that any pair of people in a given situation share the same birthday of a calendar year, not all years in the history of existence, is a lot higher than expected. According to the math, which I don't really understand, if there are 57 people in a room there is a 99% probability that at least two of those people will share the same birthday. It's because what's important isn't the number of people it's the number of pairs of people. If you have 57 people present, you have 57 asterisk 56 slash 2 pairs. The divide by 2 is because Bob plus Jane is the same as Jane plus Bob, but just multiplying would count them separately. Each of those pairs could share a birthday. And while each one has only a 1 over 365 chance of doing so, with that many pairs, the chances really build up. You don't smell rain. The additional moisture in the air actually just heightens your sense of smell. This explains why after the rain you can smell the cement so well. And why when you pee in the shower the smell is more pungent than peeing in the toilet. I wonder if, and this is just a tangent, conjecture, that's why rain is associated with very high emotion also such as extreme sadness, or romance and also fear, things like that. Because our olfactory system is strongly linked to the areas of the brain which are associated with emotion and placing memories, which makes smell great for behavioral modification and recall. Does this mean when it rains we are more susceptible to recall of these strong feelings? This might be a coincidence, but it seems to make so much sense. That is a really good hypothesis. So that's why farts smell so bad in the bath. No wonder my shower poops are so awful. The official temperature in Miami has never been 100 degrees or above, so long as they have been keeping records. Compare this to, say, Cincinnati or Street, Louis, where 100 plus degree temperatures are common in the summer. Shrimp are referred to as an abomination four times more than homosexuality in the Bible. God must really hate homosexual shrimp. Gay fish. It takes more muscles to smile than to look on in apathy. All of the clocks in Pulp Fiction are stuck on 420. The dot over the letter I is called a tittle. If you toss a penny 10,000 times, it will not be heads 5,000 times, but more like 4950. The heads picture weighs more, so it ends up on the bottom. A pregnant goldfish is called a twit. I've got loads. I knew Tails was better. Well yeah. He's just as fast as Sonic, in the early Sega games. And he can airfine fly. Jim Erlode. Having orgasms is considered an essential human right in traditional, Talmudic, Jewish law. It is considered ideal to have six, pleasurable six, at least once a week, on the Sabbath. Every day is, of course, better. A man is obligated to give his female partner pleasurable sex, even if she is not capable of having children. And absence of this can be grounds for divorce. Having sex outside of marriage is a bit of a grey area, because people got married so young during the Talmudic times there wasn't much time to sleep around. It was just considered that, if you were sexually active with someone, it was at the very least a form of engagement. A sexually active, but unmarried woman was still give the option, to cover her hair the way a married woman was supposed to. It's amazing to me how much time these ancient rabbis spent talking about having pleasurable, heterosexual, sex. Just goes to show how different Christianity and Judaism are, even though they came from a common source. James K. Polk, 11th President of the United States, suffered from chronic diarrhea. The average penis is 6 inches and the average vagina can accommodate 8 inches of penis. This means there is an average 72 miles of unused vagina in New York City alone. Okay, I've got a question related to the 27 miles per hour thing. Obviously it's interesting, 
because one wouldn't guess the number to be so high, as jizz tends to lose momentum fast. What's slowing it down so fast? Gravity. Friction from air. I guess what I'm wondering is, if you ejaculate in space, would you be shooting 27 miles per hour cum bullets everywhere, or what? 27 miles per hour cum bullets. This website points some days. What's slowing it down so fast? Tissues. How is your mom liking New York?